Hey guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale, bringing you a, something a little bit different. Today we're going to go over all the different types of deck archetypes and sub archetypes, and then list out a bunch of the most popular decks in the game. I think a lot of you guys will find this very informative and useful, so let's get right to it. So we're going to start with deck archetypes and sub archetypes. Now I'm going to go ahead and link you guys to a bunch of links for further knowledge. These, uh, these terms that I share with you guys today are really an aggregation of multiple websites, uh, literally almost 10 websites. So I picked and choose my favorites and then I added some of my own using my terminology that a lot of the viewers from my channel are already familiar with. So let's hop right into it with the main deck archetypes. Oh, and quick disclaimer, guys, these are just the words and terminology that I use to describe the game with my friends and clanmates. So you might use different words or terminology, and I want to hear from you guys. So if you think I got something wrong or if you think I forgot something, be sure to comment in the comments below. I'm interested to hear from you guys. All right, so now we'll get to the deck archetypes, guys. So starting out with the control deck. Control decks are decks that are mainly played defensively on your side of the arena. You're going to be building up positive elixir advantage countering what your opponent's trying to do, and then making counter pushes and shipping away at towers more often than not. You see like a lot of defensive structures, inferno towers, guards, mainly defensive cards, and then sometimes you'll have a proxy card, which could be like a miner or a hog rider that can do damage offensively when paired up with those countering troops for a counter push. A beatdown deck is almost the exact opposite. A beatdown deck is a deck that really relies on heavy tanks and then stacks of troop that get placed behind the tanks to do a lot of damage. A really popular one in the game right now is a Goizen deck, relying heavily on the giant and the poison and so forth. Obviously golems and PPP decks are also examples of a beatdown deck. We'll get more to the specific deck names in just a minute. So a siege deck is a siege deck. It's really built around the, uh, the offensive targeting damage dealing structures such as Expo in Mortar and mainly the deck is going to be built around protecting these units while they chip away at your opponent's tower. A cycle deck I kind of put separately from a control deck. A lot of people consider cycle decks as part of either a beatdown or a control deck or even a siege and you certainly can have a deck that's a beatdown cycle or a siege cycle deck where you're cycling to one main win condition card which you see probably in the sub arc types right now. But basically a cycle deck often includes one of if not both of the two one elixir cards in the game, an ice spirit or a skeleton, and sometimes the elixir pump as well. And what that does is it keeps your elixir moving, it keeps the deck moving, and then it can cycle to the card that is the win condition faster than the opponent can cycle to their counter. So for example, if you were playing a hog cycle deck, you'd be wanting to cycle to your hog rider card to have it available to use again before your opponent can say cycle to their cannon to defend the hog rider. Alright, so let's move on to the sub archetypes now. So what is tempo, bait, burn, proxy control, and win condition? Well, tempo is a type of deck that really relies on a lot of chip damage or a, a common card that's going to be fast, cheap, and easy to cycle to to continuously chip away at your opponent's tower. An example of a tempo card would be a hog rider or even a minor card, a card that can quickly get to your opponent's tower, do a significant amount of damage and then you can defend and cycle back to that card sooner rather than later. What is a bait deck? A bait deck are very very popular in the game and can be very effective if played by a skilled player. A bait deck could include a bunch of cards in a deck that all can be taken out with either zap, arrows, or poison. So what you want to do is, in a bait deck, you want to draw, lure out your opponent's arrows, or zap, or poison, and then catch them off guard with another quick DPS unit that has low HP. For example, a bait deck could be using a princess to draw out your opponent's arrows, and then hitting them very fast with either a goblin barrel, or a minion horde, or something aimed directly at their tower that can do a lot of damage, and their opponent won't have that direct damage counter spell available. What is a burn deck? Well, it's very similar to a tempo deck. A burn deck is basically when you're comboing that tempo unit. We just talked about hog riders or mine. 
miners, a burn would be a hog rider paired with, say, fire spirits or goblins or a miner sent to the tower and then immediately sending a uh, minions or, or goblins, another fast moving, low HP, high DPS unit to combo with the tempo. A proxy control is a control deck with mainly all defensive cards, but having one card that can quickly get to your opponent's tower acting as a proxy. That's going to be one card that you're going to play mostly on your opponent's side of the deck. And remember, we already talked about that control decks are mainly played on your side of the deck. So an example of a proxy could be, again, a Goblin Barrel, a Miner, a Hog Rider, something that's going to play and quickly move over to the opponent's side of the deck. Wing Condition we already went over, but just to reiterate, a Wing Condition is basically a deck built around one card or a combination of a few cards that really do a lot of damage. A good example of that is a Lava Hound deck or an Air Beatdown deck where you're comboing, say, a Lava Hound with a Tombstone and a Mega Minion to do a heck of a lot of damage if executed properly on your opponent's tower. So now let's take a minute to go over some of the more popular decks in the game right now. Now just a little disclaimer, there are a lot of decks that won't be mentioned at this point in the video. This is just A, what I could fit on the screen, and B, a bunch of decks that came to mind when evaluating the current meta. Now meta is another word for basically the most dominant and popular strategies in the game, given the balancing terms or the balancing atmosphere or environment in the game right now. So here are the popular decks. Trifecta, you guys probably already know most of these, but we'll run through them rapid fire. Trifecta is based around the Valkyrie, Musketeer, and Hog Rider synergy. The Hog Cycle deck is cycling your Hog as fast as possible, usually relying on a defensive unit such as a cannon to do defense in one lane while pushing the opposite lane. A triple leg deck is generally referred to a Minor Princess Ice Wizard deck with three legendaries. A Minor Control deck is using your Minor as sort of a chip damage, and then controlling the match through positive elixir trades. A 3M split is a 3 Musketeer split deck, very popular in the game, usually comboed with a Knight or other tanks such as a Miner or even a Mini P.E.K.K.A. And then you split your Musketeers in two lanes from behind your King Tower, very effective to do a lot of damage to both of your opponent's towers. A Goizen deck is probably one of the most dominant and powerful in the game right now at the, at the time of the recording of this video. Oftentimes it's based around, well it's always based around the Giant and the Poison Synergy, and then you can go ahead and combo the Prince or a Mega Minion or a Bowler with those troops and it's very very difficult to stop unless you're a really skilled player or you're playing a control deck that relies heavily on baiting out your opponent's Zap and defending with your Inferno Tower to take down that Giant. Moving along, PPP deck is a deck whose win condition revolves around the P.E.K.K.A, the Prince, and the Dark Prince doing that splash damage mixed with that really high DPS of the P.E.K.K.A and the Prince uh, with the speed of the two Princes. It's a very powerful deck. However, it's not quite as popular as it used to be. Now, the Jason deck was made popular by the first ever winner of the first ever tournament live in Helsinki, Finland. Uh, Jason used the Giant, the Elixir Pump, to gain up that Elixir advantage, and the Hog Rider to really take advantage of his opponent, uh, stacking it with low HP units such as Archer, Spear, Goblins behind that Giant. Uh, the Hound deck has risen in popularity lately. There's a lot of variations of Hound decks, but it's all revolved around the Lava Hound getting to your opponent's tower and then bombarding it with either a, a, a Skeletons from Tombstones or a Miner or even Mega Minion behind, allowing the pups to do a lot of damage, often paired with Lightning Spells. There's a lot of different combinations, but Hound decks are mainly based around the Lava Hound getting to the tower and then bombarding your opponent right before that Lava Hound pops. A Hog Freeze deck are, are very popular still in ladder play. Uh, you're relying on mostly a defensive cards such as Barbarians to do a lot of defense while oftentimes uh, actually doing a lot of damage on offense as well via the counter push and you can use that with great synergy with the hog rider and the freeze spell oftentimes capitalizing on an elixir advantage that you build and maintain throughout the match wait for that really solid counter push mixed with the hog and the freeze spell uh, moving along here royal gg deck uh, those have kind of dropped in popularity as well but royal giant was so so strong for a while there that he said royal gg as in good 
game as a as a nod to how powerful the Royal Giant once was, and it still is fairly popular in the game today. A spawner deck, our decks made basically built around the Goblin Hut and the Barbarian Hut, sometimes adding in the Furnace as well. You could obviously even add in the Tombstone if you wanted to, really building up the Elixir Advantage via Collectors and Pumps, and then capitalizing on that, especially in the last minute of a match with double Elixir time, and really swarming your enemy with troops, sometimes placing a tank such as a giant in front of those huts to really, really take advantage of your opponent by sheer volume of troops. An air affected deck is generally referred to the combination of Inferno Dragon, Mega Minion, and Lava Hound. Uh, those three cards have great synergy as the Inferno Dragon has that really powerful beam that can do a heck of a lot of damage. The Mega Minion has a, a relatively fast firing rate and does a lot of point damage from the air. And of course the Lava Hound has a ton of health, making for a very, very uh, effective trio. Uh, moving along, the Split Push is kind of like the Three Musketeers Split deck, but it's a deck that relies on using both lanes very heavily, you oftentimes using a tankier slow push in one lane and then surprising your opponent by dropping a hog rider or a prince in the opposite lane. Another example of that besides the 3M deck could even be the Jason deck when you have a strong push in one lane with your giant and then you surprise the opponent after they drop some defending troops in the giant lane with the hog rider in the opposite lane. Now finishing up our list here, a chip deck is a deck that's usually a control deck, usually a deck relying on one proxy card to chip away at your opponent's tower, oftentimes with a surge of up to 20 little mini pushes that do a little bit of damage at a time, but you're doing such a great job on defense that you don't need to take down more than one tower. And lastly, a rocket cycle deck is really relying on that direct damage of the rocket spell to slowly over the course of the match chip away again at your opponent's tower, and of course there's other variations, but you're trying to cycle to that rocket as much as possible, hopefully winning the game over a series of rocket volleys at your opponent's tower. So guys, let me know if you think I left out anything. Let me know if you thought this type of video was helpful. I have a list here, literally three or four pages that I jot down when coming up for ideas with this episode, all with different types of terminology. There's a lot of stuff that I left out. I wanted to keep it just to deck archetypes and just to popular decks in the game right now, but I have all kinds of other things such as like Splank and Split Tech, a lot of the OJ terms really, Multi-Drop, Leggy, Gemmers, everything in the world really I jotted down. So if you guys want more terminology, let me know. I'd be happy to do a follow-up video to this one. So guys, thanks so much for watching and as always, take care guys.